Did you know that a single meal without arginine can kill a cat? In this video for veterinary surgeons and undergraduates, I will explain why. The key message of this video is to never prescribe an L-lysine supplement to a sick cat. It is preferable to give L-arginine, which is an essential amino acid in the cat. In 1978, doctors Morris and Rogers published a paper showing that arginine is an essential amino acid for the cat. They fed eight cats a meal with no arginine in it. The cats became depressed, anorexic, they hypersalivated, vomited, lost weight, had tetanic spasms and one cat died. This is what happens when you constantly feed a cat low quality cereal based cat food low in arginine. Amino acids are classed as non-essential if the body can make them and essential amino acids which have to be ingested in food. Whether an amino acid is essential or non-essential depends on what species you are. I am a human, obviously, and have not eaten meat in over 50 years. Oh damn, I've just given away my age. Cats are obligate carnivores. For them, arginine is an essential amino acid. So what is it about arginine that is so essential that without it, a cat can die? Arginine is essential for the immune system, but it is even more vital for the breakdown of toxic ammonia in the urea cycle. Ammonia, NH3, is the end product of the breakdown of protein. Ammonia and ammonium are extremely toxic, especially to the brain. Ammonia is broken down in the urea cycle. If the urea cycle cannot function, ammonia rises in the blood and affects the brain. We call this hepatic encephalopathy. In the Morris and Rogers experiment, within just two hours of eating the arginine deficient meal, plasma ammonia rose to 1,400 micrograms per decaliter, which is seven times the normal level. Hepatic encephalopathy will be ringing a bell in the minds of qualified vets in the audience because of course you know that kittens with portosystemic shunts can develop hepatic encephalopathy. One of the reasons you suspect a portosystemic shunt in a cat or kitten is because they salivate excessively after eating a protein-rich meal, and sometimes they have a wet appearance on the nose, as you can see here. For people who are new to my channel, I tend to put references in the bottom right corner of the screen. And on those platforms which allow notes, I put links to key references. Of course, there are many reasons for a cat to salivate. The cat in this video is drooling due to happiness. And my cat, Sooty, was like that. You'd need to cover yourself with a towel when petting her unless you enjoyed a cat saliva shower. Salivating may also be caused by a painful mouth and it's a sign of feeling nauseous, so it may indicate nothing more sinister than a fur ball. In the UC Davis experiment by Morris and Rogers, the rapid high ammonia level caused the cats fed on the arginine deficient diet to salivate more because they felt sick and they did vomit, and then they developed seizures because of the effect of the ammonia on the brain. Ammonia is one nitrogen and three hydrogens, NH3, and is a breakdown product of protein catabolism, i.e. when you or the cat eats some protein, the body has to deal with the toxic ammonia produced. Ammonia and ammonium are very toxic, especially to the brain, and they are not water soluble. The body deals with this by turning ammonia into urea in the urea cycle, which occurs in the hepatocytes, the liver cells. Here we have a simplified drawing of a hepatocyte. Okay, it looks more like an iPhone, but I failed art class. Let's give it a mitochondrion. Okay, you're thinking, where is the nucleus? But you'll soon see that we don't have space for one, even though, of course, obviously hepatocytes have nuclei. So why am I interested in the mitochondrion? That's because the first stage of the urea cycle takes place in the mitochondrion, where ammonia plus carbon dioxide from bicarbonate and phosphates from two molecules of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, are combined to make carbamyl phosphate. You remember the whole point of this cycle is to get rid of toxic ammonia, which is a byproduct of the catabolism of proteins. 
ornithine comes into the mitochondrion and the enzyme ornithine transcarbamylase converts ornithine and carbamyl phosphate to produce citrulline. Remember ornithine. This is important because cats cannot make ornithine. Outside the mitochondrion in the cytoplasm of the hepatocyte, the enzyme arginosuccinase synthase or arginosuccinase synthetase converts citrulline and aspartate into arginosuccinate. Arginosuccinate is converted into arginine and arginine is converted by the arginase 1 enzyme into urea and ornithine. The ornithine heads back into the mitochondrion. Remember, cats cannot make ornithine. Please remember the arginase 1 enzyme. It is very important, and I'll tell you why in a moment. The urea, of course, goes to the kidneys to be excreted in the urine, while the ornithine gets recycled back into the mitochondrion for another round of the urea cycle. I've hugely simplified the urea cycle of cats. Oh, you don't say. If you want to see the urea cycle in better detail with all the enzymes and cofactors, I recommend the YouTube videos by Med Simplified and a Ninja Nerd. But of course, those videos are for the human urea cycle, not that of the cat. The problem for cats is that they cannot make ornithine. Therefore, they require its precursor, arginine, in their diets. To quote from Ball and Bunnick's paper, Cats lack the ability to synthesize ornithine because of the relatively low activity of enzymes pyroline 5-carboxylate synthase and ornithine aminotransferase that can generate ornithine from glutamate and proline. Lack of ornithine is the rate-limiting step in the essential urea cycle, which is why its precursor, arginine, has to be supplied in food. In this slide, you can see that L-arginine is essential for the proper functioning of the immune system. On the right, we have the urea cycle. On the upper left, we have an M1 macrophage, and lower left, an M2 macrophage. Proper functioning of macrophages is essential for the immune system. The enzyme arginase 1 used in the urea cycle competes with the inducible nitric oxide synthase enzyme for the available L-arginine. Inducible nitric oxide synthase is essential for the M1 macrophage to function and arginase 2 is essential for M2 macrophage function. You can appreciate that if a cat is deficient in L-arginine, the body is going to use what it has preferentially in the urea cycle rather than for macrophages, otherwise death will occur within hours rather than days or weeks. But if the macrophages cannot function properly, then the immune system is severely compromised. Therefore, we have these three enzymes competing for the scarce L-arginine. Another quote from Ball and Bonnick's paper we recommend an immediate stop of lysine supplementation for cats, and I totally agree with that statement. The key practical message of this video is to never supplement a cat with L-lysine. Why would you want to supplement a cat with L-lysine anyway? Well, lysine is used in humans with herpes virus infections because it competes with arginine for formation of the herpes virus capsid protein. So it was thought that it would be useful in cats with cat flu caused by feline herpes virus. In fact, various studies have shown that it makes feline herpes virus infection worse. Arginine is antagonized by lysine, and that is why it, it is unwise to supplement cats with L-lysine. Okay, some of you are thinking, hang on a minute. I thought it was shown that L-lysine does not antagonize arginine. Perhaps you've seen this paper by Fischetti et al., let me draw your attention to table 1 from that paper. The paper shows the plasma arginine concentration on diets containing increasing amounts of L-lysine. First of all, look at how long the cats were followed. Only 14 days. Let us compare that with the MAGS 2007 paper. The cats were followed for over 50 days in that paper, and the plasma arginine of the cats on the lysine-supplemented diet took a dive. The cats on the control diet, which contained 11 grams of lysine per kilogram of food, didn't do so well either. Their plasma arginine fell. 
going back to the Fashetti study, I decided to plot their results in a similar way to the paper we've just seen. This is how the graph looks. OK, we've got two results where the arginine doesn't seem to be decreasing, and I cannot explain that. Those are the two with the most supplemented diets. But the other four groups of five or six experimental cats have decreasing plasma arginine. I don't know how the authors titled their paper that dietary lysine does not antagonize arginine, because that would not be how I would have interpreted those results. I guess if your study is funded by Nestle Purina, perhaps it skews how you see the results. You may be wondering why I, as a veterinary virologist, have made a video on the urea cycle when I'm not a veterinary biochemist. You'll see why if you watch my video about why you should not supplement cats with feline infectious peritonitis with L-lysine. As I say, I'm not a specialist in biochemistry, and if you spot errors in this video, please let me know in the comments. If you found this video interesting, you might want to read the paper by Ball and Bunny. Many thanks for watching this video, and huge thanks to all the good people who fund my work and make videos like this possible. God bless you and your cats. This is Diane Addy, praying for an end to all animal suffering. Goodbye.